the next category is local station group, which goes to Hearst Television. It is their eighth consecutive win of station group Cronkite Award. And it is evidence of the top-down commitment to political coverage at the station uh, group. The, the judges took time to point to their transmedia content, that their coverage is a public service. We're going to see a compilation that Hearst put together for this purpose. They, they won the award for the individual stories. Here's a kind of race through uh, what some of those stories were. Virtually everything the president has tried to do has been a job destroyer. I think my record speaks for itself. I grew up castrating hogs. Something is wrong with this picture. Well, I've never been accused of hollering before. Thank you, Oklahoma. Thank you. 2014 was an interesting political year, to say the least. Hello, I'm Golston Dart from KCRA, the Hearst Television Station in Sacramento. Interesting because the digital revolution changed the dynamic for candidates. This election season, they worked harder than ever to bypass journalists and manage their own messages. You're coming to our debate next month, right? I don't know yet. The 21st? You don't know yet? No. I thought you were confirmed. I was, until that ad came out. We have been told that Governor Scott will not be participating in this debate. In September, the Washington Post reported that fewer candidates were agreeing to debates. Our stations had to work harder to get access to the candidates, but they were unrelenting. In fact, our stations produced more debates in 2014 than in 2012, 70 debates in all. And our new In Their Own Words section on our websites had candidates speak directly to voters. 471 candidates participated, a digital version of free airtime that allowed hundreds of candidates the ability to connect with their communities. In the 30 days leading up to the election, our stations aired more than 200 hours of coverage, a minimum of 12 minutes per day of issue coverage. Taken together, it is why we believe the people who live in Hearst television markets are best served to make solid political choices. Accepting on behalf of Hearst, Vice President of News, Candy Olt. Center and Marty Kaplan for your um, unrelenting work um, in shining the light on all this really wonderful work that we're seeing today. Um, also, thank you to, um, to the people who I work with and for, uh, Jordan Wortley, the CEO of Hearst Television, and Barb Michard, who is um, one of my colleagues, another vice president of news with Hearst. I really today represent the 29 television stations that produce the content that you see here. And I really represent people like Wendy Wilk, who is our Washington bureau chief, and Jonathan Shelley, who you heard from before, and the other news directors, and the other reporters and producers at all of these stations. Wendy and her team in DC, they do political coverage every day for our stations, morning, noon, and night, uh, election or not. And that, I think, speaks volumes to the commitment that, um, that Hearst Television has. Um, you know, what you saw here on the debates, we touched on it in our, um, in our conversation earlier. We had a really hard time getting people to agree to debate this time. It's the first time, we've been doing this a long time, first time in, you know, 14 years that I've really seen that happen. And so we just had to push harder. And, you know, I get calls all the time from our news directors saying, I, you know, we're really having a hard time getting these guys to participate. And we would just figure out ways to kind of go back and, you know, force them into it in some cases, but uh, shame them into it when we could. Um, but we did end up getting more debates than we did in 2012, which I think was really a testament to, uh, to their hard work. Um, the other thing that we tried to do this time um, is the, the digital free airtime, if you want to call it that. And I think it's best illustrated by our station in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, you know, if you're running for a really small race, in a small town, you're not going to be doing ads on television. You know, you're not going to be able to afford to reach a large audience. And so they had over 100 candidates um, posted on their websites with messages to voters. And so that combination of doing things like truth checks 
and one-on-one -on -one interviews and issue-focused reporting it, with the ability to let candidates who can't afford to advertise, you know, have access to our broad audience is a really important combination for us and, you know, and something that we were trying to accomplish by using digital media. I think all of us have a real challenge going forward, though. Um, I think, you know, in 2014, they tried to bypass us. In, in 2016, <laughs> they will do everything they can to, to bypass us, and I think the way that some of the presidential candidates have announced, you know, that they're going to run is an example of that. So I think it's incumbent upon all of us in this room and all of us in the journalism community to keep pushing to make sure that the public gets to know the issues that are important to them and really gets to know the people who are going to represent them. Uh, because as we discussed earlier on the panel, these stories are about education, they're about taxes, they're about, they're about green space, they're about issues that people care about. And it's really our job to figure out how to make that something that, that people will pay attention to. So thank you, we appreciate it, and we're honored.